Hey, Shalom. Welcome back to another Directed Immersion class in the original classical Hebrew for the book of Koheleth, that's Ecclesiastes. Today we are in chapter 2, verse 3, and I just want to speak blessing to everyone who is listening. May our Father grant you understanding and deep learning and excellent memories. Okay, so let's get on with it. So it says, Tarti velibi limshoch bayayin. Tarti. So what's going on with this guy? Here we have the first person ending for a perfect verb. I will just color that in cyan. So when you see the T at the end, that should make you think of I. So whatever the verb is, I something. Now the verb is a little bit difficult to recognize because the first root letter we have, that's a Tav. And the second root, I mean the third root letter we have, that's the Reish. But we're missing letter number two. So the word is actually tool. Tool. Oops, what happened there? Zoomed in too much, I think. Ah. <laughs> hmm. There. Tool. Tool, you can think of it as like to have a tool. It's to go around, to move around. It can sometimes have the idea of like searching. So, tarti doesn't mean I was late, I was tardy, but tarti means I searched. Kind of quite literally. Now, that is one meaning. Like I went around looking, but it turns out that. The ancient translators had trouble with this expression here, and they varied quite a bit. Here is an entry from Seol's commentary on Koheleth. And he writes, All the ancient versions have trouble with the expression. Most of them interpret the verb figuratively to mean some sort of mental activity. The primary Septuagint, Katekesuipsamen, I examined in the aorist. Akila and Simachus and Oethen. I considered. Theodosian, Dianoethen, I purposed, right? Like I purposed in my heart. The Latin Vulgate, Cogitavi, I thought, right? So this is just to show you that the, even the ancient versions were a little undecided. So perhaps be a bit flexible on this and a nice translation might suggest itself to you as we continue on. Okay. Next word. Ve lib e. Okay, so let me just mark that suffix first off. The e is my. Okay, and the be. This is our inseparable preposition. So that could be with or in. So, tool, tarti, I examined, I considered, I purposed, I searched. Ve libi, in or with. The levav, that's why we have the strong dogish in the bait. It's from levav, heart of e, my heart, with my heart, with my mind. Remember, most of the time in biblical Hebrew, when we encounter the words lev or levav, it means mind. So even though we can literally translate heart, the ancients believed that the heart was 
the seat of thoughts, right? If you want to talk about emotions, we use other organs for that. Tarti veli bi. So perhaps I considered or I purposed, going with the adoshin here, in my mind, lim shoch, lim shoch. Now the lamid is another inseparable preposition. Two or four. In this case, it's two. And the verb is mashach. So the reason we have the construct square around it here is because when you want to express an English infinitive like to run, to dance, or whatever, we have a lamed and we append it to the infinitive form. The infinitive construct is technically what this infinitive form is because you can put a suffix on the end of it, right? So, so lim shoch. Mashach, the verbal root mashach, really means like to drag. Okay? Not to go in drag, but <laughs> to drag, mashach. And again, there's some difficulty among interpreters. What to really do with this here? To drag. Well, we'll come back to it. Let's look at the next word to kind of see why this might be a bit problematic. Lim shoch, to drag. By yayin. So the bait, same as over here, with or in. Ah is the, so with the yayin. Yayin means wine. We've had that as one of our words of the day. Et besar e basar. Basar is flesh. Of e my flesh. So to drag. With wine, my flesh, like my body. So that doesn't really quite work, that particular nuance of the word. So let's let's have a look. I have a note here for you. Hmm. The key is going to be how this word is used in Mishneic Hebrew. So in the Talmud, Tractate Chagiga, Page 14, trying to get that to fit on there nicely, A, paragraph 10. It says, Elu ba'alei agada, shemoshechin libo sheladam kamayim ba'agada. These are the masters of agada. Or these who are masters, ba'al. Someone was talking in Hebrew literacy chat on Telegram the other day asking about Baal, various meanings for Baal. Or, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we did there and also on the YouTube comment section. They were asking about Baal. So, Baal can mean an owner, a master, a husband, like this. So, Baalim becomes Baalim, masters of Agada. So, these are the masters of Agada, going with Steinsaltz's translation here. Shemoshechin. So, here is our verb. Again, this is a later form of Hebrew, but this is one of the ways that we nail down nuances or meanings of words, is we do look not only to the ancient versions in other languages, but we also look to other dialects of Hebrew. And Mishneic Hebrew, it just follows right on the heels of Biblical Hebrew. It's an early PBH, post-Biblical Hebrew form. So, so who draw libo sheladam, the heart of man, kamayim ba'agada, like waters or water with the agada or with agada. Steinfeld says, These are the masters of agada, those who draw people's hearts like water by means of agada. So, draw, perhaps draw, right? Like, like drawing water will work for us here. Tarti velibi. I purposed within my heart, my mind, lim shoch, to draw. I think Rabbi Fox in his commentary suggests refresh, to refresh by yayin with the wine et besari, my flesh. Velibi, and just a normal and here.
and the Lev or Levav. Just a second. Of E, my, and my heart, or could, instead of the end, it could also be so, right? Like and, or maybe, maybe so, or then. My heart, my mind, no hag, ba chokma. No hag. What is no hag? Now, the verb nahag, it can mean like to drive, like to, to drive some animals. But it can also have other nuances, like to lead. And that's what we are, I want to look at here. So nahag, here it is, nahag, number one. This is from halot, to drive, like animals. And number two, when followed with bait, oftentimes has the nuance of to lead. And that's why I made the, the kind of pink, if you can see it, the pink highlighting. I surrounded the bait also the next word, right? So we have this nahag plus bait, nahag plus bait. So to lead. So in my mind or then my heart, nohag bachokhmah. And I, don't, I think this is more of a intransitive, was led by the wisdom, by the wisdom. Any comments or questions? I should be with you guys live in the premiere for this. We have been having some crazy rain, so if I'm not there, at least you've got the video. Okay. And what I'm going to do today, it's a pretty long verse, and I've got a decent amount to say about it. So, I'm going to go to part B of the verse next. So, let's just review what we have real quickly. Maybe I'll zoom in for the... Uh, no, let's not zoom in. That's fine. Tarti veli bi limshoch bayayin et besari. I didn't label that one, did I? Let's let's get that guy. Let's get the E at the end of basal. E. For those of you who care about such things, you can note... There's a vocal schwa here, even though the word is actually basa. Basa. What happens is the accent moved to the last syllable. That's what's happening right here, right? That's the accent mark. And so this guy, which was a pre-tonic comet, then changes into a vocal schwa. Right? So that's the rule with pretonic comments, in case you're wondering why the spelling changed. So when we put the word into the construct state and we added a suffix, the suffix moved to the end, as it likes to do in Hebrew. So besari, basal came, became besari, although the Yemenites still make a vocal schwa kind of like a ah. Okay. So I purposed, or I thought, thought is nice here, actually, going with the, with the Vulgate, Kajitavi. So I thought with my mind, to draw or to refresh with wine my flesh. And my mind, or then my mind, led with wisdom or was led with the wisdom we'll unpack that more as we get to the rest of the verse okay for you note takers now is a good time to snap your note because i am about to turn the page i'm just going to write tool a little bit cleaner here Okay. Tool. 
All right, changing slides. Did I give you a second to look at that before I read it? So on the surface, this means and to grasp or and to grab. Now you see the little B here? The B here tells us there's something in the critical apparatus that is suggesting a difference or at least alerting us to a difference. And I want to have a look at that right now. Let's see what that is. <laughs> I. There we go. Here's the note in the apparatus. BHS suggests that this is velo ochez. See, we have the same consonants, although the olive there has collapsed. So, kind of contracted. It's possible that that was some lost dialectical form. You do have this happen when you put two olives together in close proximity. They will collapse, so it would be fine if the speaker was just saying velo ochez, that we would have them collapse. As an example of this, if you take the first person imperfect form of a verb, so that would be adding an olive to the verb to remind you of the olive in ani, right? So, for example, eshmol, that's an olive at the beginning. I will shemong. I will safeguard. I will keep. If you choose a verb that starts with an olive as the verbal root, like ama, he said, and you want to say I will say, it becomes amo. So that olive, you add the olive, and then it just combines with the existing olive. Because if you think about the sound olive used to make, it was like just a glottal stop, right? The example I like to use is the Cockney accent in Britain. So to say British with a Cockney accent, they'll say British. You hear it's just a stop. You don't say the T, it's just Brit, British, eh, Brit. It's just stopping of the sound. That's what the Aleph was. So it doesn't make sense to have two of them in a row. You can't, what are you going to, eh, eh, like you have to start to get the stop, you see? So that's probably why linguistically they collapsed in Tanakhit. So this is a totally possible form here. We're not having to really change the consonantal text to get velo and not ohez and not to seize or to grab onto be sikhlut be by the way there is a disagreement on this some scholars believe that it is vilechos that kohelet actually decided to seize to grab onto folly which is going to come up next right and others say that no he decided not to he just wanted to examine it so you can go either way on this you can accept BHS's recommendation, velo ochez, or you can stay with the actual text, the way the Masoretes pointed it, velechoz. Okay. Bait is an inseparable preposition. With. In. It means some other things against, etc. Sikhlut. Sikhlut. Sikhlut is a fairly rare word. I don't know how many times it shows up, but that means folly. Folly. Not a good name to give your kid. <laughs> folly. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> folly. And not to grasp or entertain, ponder perhaps even, sikhlut, folly. I like, I like the, I personally like the BHS's suggestion, so that's what I'm going with, but you do not have to agree with me. We, we're doing a slight emendation just by vowels. Ad, ad until, asher, er, a, until when, so asher, many of you have learned asher, the relative pronoun, to mean that or which, but it can also mean another W word. It can mean when, okay? It can also even mean where at times. So here I'm going to go with when, er, a. 
Now, you guys know this verb. The root is, unless you're new, new. If you're new, new, you'll go through our Hebrew words of the day, and then you'll know this word. Reish and Aleph and He. is to see. And then we have the Aleph at the beginning. And when you see an Aleph at the beginning of a verb, this happens to be an imperfect verb. When you see an Aleph up there, that should remind you of the Aleph in the word Ani. Ani. So that Aleph, also Anochi, well, that is, it should be like a, a memory point for you. When you see the Aleph here at the beginning of an imperfect verb, it's okay if you don't know what imperfect means, just recognize the pattern. Jammed an Aleph there and it looks like it's not part of the verbal root. Well, it's not. It's to remind you of the Aleph in Ani or Anochi. So I will re I will see. So asher win er e when I will see or when I will look, when I will inspect Aze Tov. Aze Tov. Now this is kind of difficult language. It's a little bit weird. There's something idiomatic happening here, but let me show you literally what it's saying. A means where. Where, like locationally. Where Ze, ze is this. Where is this? Tov, something good or goodness. Although goodness is usually tov. But it could just be a pointing issue. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's see what's going on here. I have a note for you about the idiom. <laughs> if it will let me pull my note up. There we go. So, a, ze, literally, where this. Idiomatic for what really is. So, velo echoz, if we read this way, velo echoz, and that I would not take hold of, be is what we're going to take hold of, of what? Sichlut, folly. Uh, until, asher win, er a, I would see, a ze tov, what really is tov, what really is good. I'll just zoom in for you note takers on smaller screens. Oh, I just realized my uh, my Patreon banner might be blocking a little bit on the bottom. I'm trying to be more aware of that. Sorry about that. If you'd like to become a patron, you like what we're doing here, please consider joining my Patreon. The link is below the video, patreon.com slash Hebrew Literacy. And you can sign up for a monthly donation over there. We also have special videos available for patrons. For example, my Isaiah Dominance course that we're going through, walking through the book of Isaiah. And there's some stuff in there about Revelation as well. It's an incomplete course, but kind of give you a taste of the richness of the book of Revelation. We might pick that up again sometime when there's time. And I'll be trying to give you guys more stuff over there as we go. Plus, it just helps. It helps to be able to survive to keep doing these things you know so special thanks to all of you who are patronizing this work okay leave nay leave nay adam and so here we have a construct chain leave nay with the lamed being in inseparable preposition, meaning he cannot stand alone, although there are some poetic forms, so don't come at me in the comments later. What are you talking about? You don't know anything. That... <laughs> yes, disclaimer, there are some ancient forms that resurface sometimes in poetry where it's attached to the particle mo. So, right? Le mo, kamo, ba mo, right? So you can see that sometimes in Psalms. So, le, to, bene, coming from banim. Right? Banim, 
children, we drop the men, bene, children of ha adam, of the man, children of the man. This is one way to say humans. The humans are here. Are you a ben adam, a son of man? Are you a human? Livne ha adam. And just a quick reminder, whenever the last part of a construct chain is definite, that means it's a name or it has a suffix or it has the definite article like we do here, we have here, then that makes the entire chain definite, which means any words beginning the chain, we have to add V to them. Unless it sounds weird in your target language, like English or whatever, then you don't have to. So, live neha adam. So, to the children of the man, literally is what it says. So, to human beings. Okay. Any comments or questions? How are you guys doing? I'm going to give a brief pause for discussion. Just pausing here. If you're just coming into the video, don't worry. This is intentional. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying this book. I find Kohelet to be really wonderful. It, sometimes people shy away from Kohelet theologically because, well, he's experiencing the world, right? He's talking about the joys of humanity, drinking and all of these sorts of things that oftentimes are eschewed in religious circles. Like, oh, no, you can't, you can't drink. No, you can't, can't do those things. And so it's a little difficult to work through and to connect it with the Torah. But a proper reading, I think, causes no problem at all. It seems to me to be Shalom HaMelech after his fall, reflecting on how he messed up, right? Reflecting on all of those things. In which case, you sure could argue for the idea of Velechoz actually being and to sample, to grab hold of, to try out Sichlut folly, right? See what, so that he could learn, right? Maybe he really is justifying why he decided to participate in some things that he should not have participated in just to learn. It's really, it could go either way with this first verb. So I really don't want to just stick my opinion of the Velo Ochez, just agreeing with the apparatus, because you totally can go the other way. Totally. That's a completely fair way to understand the verse. All right. Ezetov, what really is good? Livne ha'adam, for people, for humans, <laughs> for human beings. Asher ya'asu tachat hashamayim. Asher, so now this is kind of a nice Hebrew parallelism. I've shared with you before that oftentimes a poet will use, when he uses the same word, in parallel, although a share is kind of common, it might not be happening here. It's often to tease out a different nuance from the same word. When he uses different words, it's often to hone in on their similarities. If they have like multiple meanings, each word, if if any of those meanings are the synonyms, then it's to lock those in, right? So it's kind of a different, like to differentiate and to distinguish or to pull out what's the same. So in this case, it's the same word. Up here it was when or where. And here it's probably which, that which, ya'asu, ya'asu. So the verb is ayin sin he. So we got the first root letter, we have the second root letter, and the third one is missing. The third one is a he. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. That's the third one. He's number three. He would have been. Just right after the scene. Okay. So Asher, which is Ya'asu. Yod and the Shurik, they are telling us who's doing the doing. Okay. So when you see a Yod at the beginning of a verb, that's not part of the root. 
that tells you it's third person. Okay, so I'm just going to say he. Okay. But when you see the oo at the end, this makes it a plural. So it's they. I don't like how I did my E there, but I don't have my normal stylus with easy erase, so we'll just <laughs> keep it like that. They. So, yeah, asu is they do. Asher. Which, ya asu, who's the they? It's the, it's the bene ha'adam, the human beings. Which they do. Tachat, under, remember, Yiddish tuchas, it's your butt, your buttocks is your tuchas, and that's from an Ashkenazi Hebrew reading of tachat, when you have a tav at the end without a dagesh, that's an S sound. So you can kind of see how tachas, tachas, Hebrew being sucked into Yiddish as a loan word, became tuchas. It's your under part, right? So tachat, under, ha shamayim, ha Shamayim. The Shamayim. Shout out to my new friend Pavel over in Italia. Great to have you here, Achi. Tachat ha-shamayim. Under ha the shamayim Sun. Pardon me. I always want to say sun because that feels that seems to be the normal speech pattern in Kohelet. And in fact, you see the little C here? That's going to show us that some manuscripts do say sun. So this is actually underneath the shamayim, the heavens. The heavens. Let's have a look at my note. So this is a note from the critical apparatus of Bibli Hebraic Ashtukatansia. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Sorry to German speakers. I'm not making fun. It's the Austrian accent that we find funny. Okay. Ha Shamayim is what's in this manuscript, but multiple manuscripts, including ancient versions of the Septuagint and the Syriac Peshitta. Their translation interprets that it's clearly Hashemish, the sun. So I wasn't totally off my kilter there. I think I did this last week or the week before as well when I saw Hashemim and I just read it as Hashemish because that's what my mind was expecting. <laughs> so, okay, that's not a proper hermeneutic. You just change the text because you think it should be something else. Everything which is done under the heavens. Miss Paul. Yemei chayeham, chayeham. So let's mark our suffix here. That's a long construct chain. I'll go ahead and connect it. They're all connected. No. Oh, why is it black? I pressed aqua. <laughs> Just glue together those constructs. Okay. In case you don't know, a construct, nouns in Hebrew exist either in the absolute state or in the construct state? The absolute state is how you usually learn them, though there are some exceptions. Construct is basically how you express of in biblical Hebrew, certainly in Torah Hebrew. In Torah Hebrew, we didn't have the particle shel yet, shin lamed, which is like a short form from asher, from this word over here, asher, that's the she, when it fixes to the beginning. And the lamed is like belonging to the inseparable preposition lamed, like we have up over here, right? This guy. So, she le, that which is to, over time developed into late Tanachit, that's late biblical Hebrew, LBH, to the particle shel, which is how has survived into Mishnaic, rabbinical Hebrew, and into modern Hebrew. So, that's the way that's easiest to say of, is just to say shel, right? Sheli, it's like mine, it's of me. Right, that or that which belongs to e, right? So you will see that in later biblical Hebrew. You will not see that in Torah Hebrew. The construct which we see here is the normal way to say of. Okay, so here we have mispah is a number. 
the root being siper, to re recount, relate, right? Like to count, okay? A sefer is a way that you recount what happened, right? You retell what happened in a sefer, which is a scroll or a book. Mispal is a number, a number. So mispal, its construct of yeme. This is the plural of yom. It's kind of hard to tell because, look, the vav is totally gone. In fact, it looks kind of like more, more like waters of, right? Yamim, yame, like, but it's actually days of. So yom, the plural of yom is yomim or yamim. Drop the mem, days of chayehem. So this is chayim, which is life. We drop the mem, life of ham. Ham. <laughs> that is our pronominal suffix for them. By the way, if anyone is interested in Middle Egyptian, that is the language, the, pri the predominant language of the hieroglyphs in Egypt, you will find that it has many of the same pronominal suffixes or slight variations of them that we have in Hebrew. Isn't that neat? So you get some crossover there, even though it's, it's well, it's not really just a Hamaritic language. Many scholars consider it a, a combination of Semitic and Hamaritic, right? So we kind of get both. So because the last word is definite, it has ham on it. Remember, three ways to make a word definite. One, to put the definite article like we see here, right? up over there. Two, is to put a suffix on it, like here. And three is for it to just be a proper noun. That's a name, right? So since this has them, or there, technically, there, then the whole phrase is has to be definite. So it will impart its definiteness I'll let me mark it as definite. He's actually we'll do the same as we did up above. Death to make it one less thing for people to process. That word is definite, and it's going to share its definiteness with the whole chain. So with this word and with this word, okay, they all get the chain there, the definiteness. So we have that definiteness. That's the right. So, mispar, the number of definiteness here, the days of chayehem, their chayim, their life. Right? So, I'll just give you a little reminder that there was a mem on there, and he went away so we could put the suffix on. There was a mem here. So, if you're looking for that word, it's the word chayim, like lechayim. He was there, and he went away. He was here. Because we had to put the word in the construct before we could put a suffix on it. Okay? So one of the words that you might have learned in the construct is the word bait, right? Like beth, lechem, beit lechem, Bethlehem, house of lechem, house of bread, right? Or food. It can also, it can also mean grain. Lechem can mean grain in some context. So bait is just the construct form of bayit. So the word is actually by it in the absolute. It's funny. So a lot of people, they, they recognize Beit, right? Because Beit Yisrael, right? The house of Israel, right? Or Beit Yosef, the house of Joseph. You know, so we see Beit a lot in the Torah. You don't see by it so often. So that's a word where a lot of times people, they learn the construct first. They learn and recognize Beit first, right? Or like Bethel, right? Beit, Beit El, right? House of the Divine. Or so, how sort of an angel, etc. So here, Miss Paul, Chayehem, the number of the days of their lives. Okay. Any comments or questions? If you if you missed the live stream, well, the premiere, it's kind of like live. I'm pre-recording because of some technical issues we've been having sometimes lately. But if you missed the live, the premiere, you can leave a comment down below. I've gotten a bit better about responding to comments. The problem is when you respond to my response, I might not see it. <laughs> you know, YouTube Studio doesn't usually flag a response to a comment. So I just have to make a note. I try to check in on those about weekly. 
But, uh, you know, if you want to join the conversation, I recommend you join us over on our Biblical Hebrew Telegram channel. You can use the Telegram app on your smart device or on your computer. They have it for Mac people. Oops. <laughs> Oops. They got it for Mac people, Windows people, whatever kind of people you are. You can join us over at t.me, that's me, 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 slash Hebrew Literacy. We'd love to see you over there. Now, just to note, I think we have about 170 people there or something like that. When you go to the room Hebrew Literacy, sometimes people, they don't join because like, oh, there's only four people there. <laughs> you know, they look at it. But that's that's an admin screening room, right? So we will screen you at first, just kind of say hello to you, find out how you are. We're trying to protect our community from Islamofascism, which we had an attack some months back from. So, so don't get discouraged. Come in the room, say hi, chat with the admins a little bit, and then we'll move you over to our actual Hebrew literacy room where all the action is. Okay. So I hope you guys have been blessed by this study tonight as we work through a pretty long verse in Kohelet. And I will see you probably on Shabbat. Yeah. As we have our discussion of the ancient triennial Torah cycle, right? For those of you who are new, we follow the ancient, this is the older three-year reading of the Torah, which is linear, not what Masorti does, not the conservative Jewish study where they actually just do the linear, but they break it up. First year, you do the first part of Genesis, you know, like of Breshit. The next year, you do the second chunk of the Breshit Torah portion. Third year, th we don't do it like that. We This is a linear reading. So we are in the book of Numbers right now as an example. Yeah. So coming to the end of Numbers so it's it's actually very neat. It's a three and a half year reading. You start with the Shemitah year and it ends around Pesach. And then you do the cycle again at Pesach and it ends right when we get the Shemitah year. So twice in a seven year cycle. I think that's pretty cool. And so it's kind of slowing down gears. You can really rest with the text. We try to go through all of the Hebrew unless it's too long, then I won't. But uh, you, you can really improve your Hebrew, even if that's all you care about. And it's it's a drash, so it's like a sermon as well. And we also try to do the ancient triennial half Torah reading. So this is the these this is the cycle that was older than the than the cycle that Kalal Yisrael uses today, right? The Babylonian one year reading. This is the ancient Jerusalem three and a half year reading. So join us for that if you're interested. Same channel. It's usually about two hours, and I usually only leave those up for about a week afterwards okay because you know who wants to hear me preach <laughs> so so anyway i hope you guys will be blessed may adonai give you amazing memory retention for lashon hakodesh the holy language shalom shalom